in the land that I'm living in. I want to sing it to the sing it to the daughter. Da, 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 yeah. And then we'll build that up. And then uh, the, the last time through, it's like, look at what the Lord has done. Then twice we do that, right? Look at what the Lord has done. One, two, pop. That's our bow. Are you cool with that, or do you want to just go right in? Whatever you want, I'll follow you. On three. One, two, three. That's our bow. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You got a minute, literally. Literally a minute before we got to play. You guys sound great. Yeah, go, go, quick, 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 buddy. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church on the Rock. Come on in. Uh, grab yourself a spot if you're able to and, and you want to. Please stand with us. We're going to worship our God uh, with a song called We Praise You. Now the praise, let praise be a weapon that silences the enemies. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise, let praise arise. We see your name in the dark, it changes everything. We sing with all we are, reclaim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the 
for sure. Why don't you all have a seat? Thank you so much for coming and uh, worshiping with us, uh, especially those who are guests with us. I hope you can sit back and relax and enjoy our worship service. Uh, my name's Dave Overhold, our lead pastor, and uh, we have, uh, we're going to start to gear you up to be able to meet some of your neighbors. But before we do that, I'd like to uh, turn your attention to this thing called a connection card. This is for those who are here often there is a place to, for you to fill out some prayer requests. And us as staff, we go and take those prayer requests and we pray into them. So uh, this is a great time to go and take that and fill that out. And if you are visiting with us, if you are new here, uh, fill that out and you can turn it in at, uh, on the way out at our Welcome Center. You get a gift there, you get a gift in the mail. We just <laughs> know God is so generous, we continue to give all the gifts that, uh, that uh, he gives to us. So uh, just before we go to the connection, uh, the community time, I'd like to welcome those online. If you are here and you'd like to share, why don't you go ahead and share this so other people can find our service. 
and our community time question is going to pop up on the screen. This is actually a time for you to go and get to know some people. If you are regular here at Church on the Rock, why don't you stand up and actually go and meet somebody that might be new here. That would be fantastic. It's also a time for parents to take your kids out to, uh, to our children's ministry. If, again, if you are new here, you can head out that hallway with your kids. The preschool kids turn to the left. The uh, elementary school kids turn to the right. So uh, before we, uh, before we go do that, let me give you the question. I think the question of the day it should be here. that uh, There's something that has made you laugh recently. What has made you laugh recently? So think about that. It might be something on a, uh, uh, online. I saw this, this squirrel. I'm not sure if you've seen this viral video thing. Where a squirrel goes in and he pulls a broom down and then lays under the, under the broom and so it looks like he's dead. It's like he's staging his own dead death. Anyway, it, 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 it's a small thing but made me laugh today. Why don't you stand up and share with other people what has made you laugh today. And parents, why don't you take your kids out to our Kids Rock.
Well, good morning, Church on the Rock. Yeah. Woo, yeah, it is good to see you here. And uh, yeah, I get to wear a couple of hats today, and uh, some of our, our staff are away, and it is uh, good to see you. I know I met some folks uh, that are new here. I hope you can sit back and relax. We're a very relaxed church, and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy this message time. After the message, we have lots of worship where you can enjoy the music and listen to God as he speaks to you through the worship time. And uh, I hope you can uh, relax with that. Next Sunday, next Sunday is Camp Sunday. And uh, it's exciting to me. Like, you're going to see camp t-shirts. We're going to have little kids on the stage singing songs. And uh, there's going to be freezies. You know, that's worth coming to church for just the freezies. And uh, the best thing about it is some of our kids that uh, might not have been going to church are going to come and be a part. And I want our family to love them so well. Uh, we're going to have a baseball game afterwards. And uh, I'm going to give a very short message very, that's very accessible to people on the way to God that might not be religious. So this might actually be a great time if you have families of any stripe to invite them out for next Sunday for Camp Sunday. Uh, so let's, uh, I'm going to pray for that. Then we're going to get into a uh, study of God's Word today and to actually get us ready and ramped up for what God's going to do next week through us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what a great privilege it is to be with you here in your gathering, the local church. God, you tell us to gather you tell us to do that. I, I believe that's for our encouragement so we can sort of spur each other on to love and good works. We can be prayed for and we can pray for others. We can actually bring our potluck lunch here and share it with others what you have done in our lives. So, Father, for those who are, of us who are here and those online, Lord, I pray for this, uh, that your word would go and do your work. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. Amen. Well, since uh, next week is going to be Camp Sunday, I'm going to do a little bit of a different message. I'm kind of bopping ahead in the, the book of Colossians, and I'm going to come to my favorite part. I thought, man, I can't get through the book of Colossians unless I tell you my favorite part of this book. This book, I've, this little section we're going to look at, I've lived with for decades, and, and I've memorized it. it. It's been in my heart and soul. I'm going to try and, uh, you know, keep my enthusiasm about this part of Scripture down a little bit so you don't get freaked out. But this, I believe, is one of the most important sections of Scripture in this whole book. I always want to remind you that God loves you more than you can imagine. And he wants to step into a, a living relationship with you that begins a lifelong adventure with him. And this section we're uh, going to look at is the one of the most adventurous sections that you will see in the Bible. It's adventurous because it touches the heart of God. And like any good adventure, there's danger. If we apply this, this is dangerous. That's a, I love that. There's real reward. There is a touch of the supernatural, all in this section that we're going to be, going to be studying. So I uh, hope you can put your seatbelts on, ready to receive from what God has for us. Now, I was trying to figure out, how can I introduce this? How can I, like, like get you in, get your, your hopes and your heart beating over this section of Scripture? And I can't think of a better way than just letting Jesus introduce this subject. So although we're not going to be looking at Jesus' teaching so much, I'm going to let his teaching sort of be an introduction for this section of the book of Colossians. Jesus had this interesting crowd at one time. He was speaking, and there were these uh, the Pharisees. The Pharisees, just think of, you know, old school church people, like very religious, you know. They had did everything right, and they made sure everyone else did everything right. You can just imagine those people. But right beside them were sinners. They said that the place was packed with sinners and a special brand of sinners that needed their own definition, tax collectors. They were so bad they had their own definition. So sinners and tax collectors. I think sometimes we just uh, you know, sort of wash over what sinners and tax collectors are like. Like these people <laughs> would rip people off. They were the drunkards that the people would swear and the people that if you were around you'd go, 
I'm putting my hand on my wallet, you know, just in case. So, the, so you can just imagine, these people are pressing in, wanting to listen to Jesus, mixed up with very religious church people, all right? Because <laughs> you just see this mess, and you just see Jesus looking, trying to pick out what message is he going to give. So he gives this message in Luke chapter 15. Luke 15, this is what he starts to, to talk about as he sees people just leaning in and listening to him. As you think about the crowd, you realize that people uh, who are nothing like Jesus, liked Jesus. Isn't that wild? People who were nothing like Jesus, liked Jesus. Jesus would not have done many of the things that the sinners would do, but he was there, and they liked him. They just liked being around him. They were attracted to him somehow. And so he tells three stories. I'm not going to go through this whole thing because this isn't what the message is about. But I just wanted to get you uh, to, to understand Jesus' focus of God's heart. He sees, okay, this is what God's heart is all about. He starts with this in Luke chapter 15, verse 4. So he says, suppose, suppose, one of you has a hundred sheep. You, you know, you're going, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a good-sized flock, yeah. And loses one of them. Does he leave, doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? You just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. It's going to take longer because you find out in the story, he comes back and throws a party. So this isn't a one-hour one lost sheep. This might be a multiple-day lost sheep. And all you can just see all the guys going, yeah, 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 I did that once. Yeah, remember Aaron? Yeah, he was gone two days. Yeah, yeah. I could. He's just drawing him in because Jesus is so good. And then he does the reveal. And he explains this parable. Some parables, he doesn't explain this one. He does in Luke 15, verse 7. I tell you that in the same way, in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven. I'm going to say that word, more rejoicing in heaven, more. And you go, that bothers me, the more. Isn't God like everything about the same? He, isn't he sort of even keeled? Well, no, actually not. He says, this actually excites God more. There is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents, ah, oh, the lost sheep, than the 99 righteous persons who don't need to repent. You go, well, well hold on. Who are those righteous people? Well, I'm one. I, I'm one. I, you know, I gave my life to Jesus, and, and he's taken away my sins, so... I don't need to repent to get, he's, he's, I'm one of the 99. And hold, you say, hold on, hold on, Jesus is more excited about one person taking another step closer to him than he is about me. I, I, I know he loves me the same as he loves that person. I know he loves the world the same. God just loves the world. He loves me. But his heart, that gets his heart pounding, the excitement in God, if you can say that, is more excited about the loss being found. The loss being found. And sometimes that bothers us. That bothers us. And, and, <laughs> but we've all experienced it, right? Okay, how many people go out the front door and do the check? Maybe this is a guy thing, I don't know. Uh, phone keys wallet. Phone keys wallet, yeah, phone keys wallet. That's very important, phone keys wallet. And if you miss one, you go, oh, hold on, hold on. Where is it, right? Now, here's, here's the scenario. What if you do keys wallet, keys wallet, where's my phone? Where's my phone? So you go up and check the bedroom. Phone, phone's not, you check your pockets and your coat, it's not there. You look in the car window, it's not there. You have lost your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to increase the amount of, of stress in your life, just me mentioning that. Are you all checking where it is right now? Yeah? Yeah, I, I, it's back here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Now, now, the deal is, what's worth more? Well, you know, your phone's probably backed up. You can always get a new phone. Cars may be worth more than your phone. So maybe the car's worth more. Could you imagine if you lost your phone, somebody saying this to you? Oh, it's okay. You still got your keys in your wallet. You go, 
No, you know what the difference is? Although they're both all the same worth, my focus is on what is lost. Why? Is it worth more? No. But my whole focus is on what is lost. I heard one person say it this way. When we lose something of value, we focus on what's lost to the neglect of what's secure. Because it's secure, right? So that part where Jesus says, listen, there's more rejoicing in heaven over one person who's spiritually lost than a whole room full of people that are in God's family. And again, it's not that he loves you less. You are just as valuable, just as valuable. But there's some heart-pounding thing that happens. Wow. What about the lost? So God's heart is focused on winning the spiritually lost. That's why he sent his only son to die. He sent his only son to die, not ultimately just to be a good example. There are other good examples in the Bible. He died and rose again, so the lost could be won. The lost could be won. This is God's heart, his focus, his yearning, that every person comes to Christ, that he was, would be able to be their father that they would receive the Holy Spirit, they'd never be alone, they'd live forever. And so, although God loves us all and interacts with us all and has this wonderful relationship with us all, you still know his heartbeat, his focus, is winning those who are spiritually lost. Okay, that's the introduction. <laughs> now let's look at this section in Colossians. I told you the first part of Colossians sort of tells you what to believe. Second part tells you how to live that out, how to actually do this. And so this is super practical section of Scripture, super practical. We're going to start to read Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, and we're going to read all the way down to verse 6. So if you have your Bible that's alive and want to turn to that, you're welcome to do that. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Devote yourselves to prayer. Being watchful and thankful. Watchful and thankful. <laughs> Devote yourself to prayer. I remember I, I took uh, two years of Greek in undergrad and uh, tried to do it as best as I could. I, I just love my Greek teacher, uh, Jerry Hawthorne. And, and I remember him, him looking. He'd do a little d Greek devotional before we started the grammar part that was so hard. And uh, in this devotional, he said, here is this word, devote yourself to, to prayer. He said, you know what that word devote means? It's used in racing, as if a horse is racing, as if something is giving everything it has towards something. And he said, the best picture in me, he says, he's got a little dog. I still loved him, even though he liked dogs. And he said, he had a little dog, and he'd go, here, boy, here, boy, come here. And he said that little dog would tear off across the field. Just flew I remember him doing that. And I'm going, I can see that. I can picture that. Then he leaned in and said, that's what it means to devote yourselves to prayer. Just go pray, pray, pray. I don't think any of us in this room because so, okay, well, I got that one down. Let's move on. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it something that you go, oh, yeah, I need to do that more. I need to do that more. Well, this is a reminder. It's all in the context of praying for people on the way to God. It is so important. There's the two little words in there, being watchful. I always thought it was interesting because when I grew up, I thought you just close your eyes when you pray. Why, why are you looking at other people? No, <laughs> you're just watchful in your own spirit. Because God's going to tap you and, and tell you who to pray for. Do you ever, in your prayer, in the middle of it, you get sidetracked on something? Come on, right? Yeah? Okay, it's just me. All right. So the, maybe you're sidetracked. Or maybe that's a, a prompting and a watching as you, oh, yeah, I should be praying for that. So as you pray, be watchful because God might be leading you in your prayer. And they'd be thankful. Thankful. I think it's like... Uh, it's a thankfulness. It's just a heart correction we all need, isn't it? Because how many times can we come to God in prayer 
and actually just complain a lot. Oh God, this is going wrong. This is going wrong. My life is horrible. Oh, and that person and this person. Oh, so I think part of the reason why, you know, devote yourselves to prayer, listen during it, and go into it with a heart of thanksgiving. Why? It just sets your whole mindset to God. You go, oh, okay, hold on, hold on. God, you're awesome. You're wonderful. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. And, and when more things are prompted up, you thank God for that. It's just a whole way to devote yourselves to prayer. I know, uh, I know some people are, are, are not happy about prayer or, or backed away from prayer because it just didn't seem to work just didn't seem to work. I didn't get the girlfriend. I didn't get well. I didn't get the child. I didn't get married. I didn't get all these things. I prayed for these things. I, I believe that is just the discouragement of the enemy. God wants you to do persevering prayer. Continue to do that. God does not make anyone do anything, but I believe he answers every prayer. And so every time we pray, it's like this river that's taking a bend, and it cuts a little bit of the bank off, and it cuts a little bit of the bank off. You've seen that, right? Where, where there's this erosion because the continual prayer that happens in somebody's life. And so just continue to pray, just to continue to pray. It's an old story of mine, but I just love it. I think God did this in my life just to, to remind me of, of how important prayer was. Uh, Harvey, my friend uh, in uh, high school, we went to this Bible study uh, one Wednesday night, and we we're all praying. And, and one of the girls says, "We need to pray for Don Crawford." And, we, and I, I didn't know why we need to pray Don Crawford. I think it was the reason because she wanted him to become a Christian so she could date him. Anyway, that aside, so she said, "We need to do that." And we all like, you know, we saw uh, Kumbaya, and we swayed back and forth, and we prayed for Don Crawford. And then Harvey, just in this idealistic high schoolish moment, said, "What time is it?" And it's like quarter to ten on Wednesday. He said, "I will pray quarter to ten every single Wednesday until Don becomes a Christian." And we all said, "We're." going to do that too. We sang Kumbaya some more and that was awesome. And the next week, guess what? I prayed quarter to ten for Don Crawford. Isn't that amazing? Week after that, I forgot. <laughs> it just left my mind. A year later, Harvey and I are walking to, to a Shaw's Dairy store to get some popsicles. They stopped making popsicles. We don't even know what those are anymore. Sad day, moment of silence. Anyway, we were going to get a popsicle, and as we're going there, Harvey stops and says, hold on, Dave, it's Wednesday. I go, good for you, Harvey, you know what day it is. No, 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 it's quarter to ten. Good, you can tell time. Let's get going. He says, no, it's time to pray for Don Crawford. I looked at him. You've been praying for him for a year? Now, Harvey is not always the most sensitive person in the world. He turns to me and says, you haven't? We got on our knees in front of somebody's house, <laughs> prayed for Don. I, I went back to my house that night, wrote Don Crawford's name on a post-it note. <laughs> so, so at least I could forget that. Unless I remember somebody saying that the dullest pencil has a, has a better uh, memory than the sharpest mind. So I, I put it there, and I, uh, when I went to sleep, I prayed for him. When I woke up, I prayed for him. A couple months later, I heard through the grapevine, Don said yes to Jesus. Yeah. Don uh, became a missionary for a uh, group called uh, a Power to Change. He's a pastor out in the West Coast. I've never seen him. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I've never met him. But someday in heaven, he's going to find out a couple 17-year-olds prayed until he came to Christ. Devote yourselves to prayer. That's the first thing that uh, this passage says. So number one, pray until they come to him. Pray until they come to him. Pray until they come to him. Then the passage goes on, Colossians 4, uh, verse 3. And pray for us, and pray for us, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I'm in chains. 
He tells you where he is. He's in chains. He's imprisoned in Rome. He's chained between two guards. Sometimes he's in house arrest, but he still has two guards around him. So open doors for me. He's not talking about going to different countries. He's not talking about going across the street. What does he mean when he says open doors for me? He's saying, could you just open up good opportunities for me to talk to these guards, these other people that just open up opportunities? Well, well, Paul, why don't you just drive it through and tell them all? No, no, he's, he wants us to be a partnership with, with the Holy Spirit in him. So God, could you just open up a door for me to share these things? <laughs> and so he did, so much so in the book of Philippians 1. It says the palace guard, many of the palace guards, are Christians. Many in Caesar's household are Christians. Well, how did that happen? They had the unenviable job of guarding Paul. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they had to spend three hours with him. So, what's your name? Yeah, tell me about your family. Oh, let me pray for you. <laughs> Can I tell you about Jesus? Uh, I believe God opens up doors. If we ask, if we say, God, send me I want to tell somebody about you. There's these doors that open up that are frighteningly beautiful. At Starbucks, standing in line. You know, I go and talk to the person next to me. Wow, everybody wanted to go to Starbucks today. <laughs> right? 10% more friendly. Looks at me, yeah, he said, and I got to get out of here soon. I said, well, I'm going to plant myself here for a while. He says, that's a really big book you're carrying. What is that? It's the Bible. <laughs> Why are you carrying a Bible? Because I love to read it. Uh, I'm a believer in Jesus, and he speaks to me through it. Our conversation wasn't long. <laughs> At that moment, too many Starbucks people were pushing people through. But it was an opportunity, wasn't it? It was a seed planted. And the more I, I, I've lived, the longer I've lived, I, the more I've noticed things that are so easy and so natural and so beautiful when we pray for open doors. This is not us versus the world. You don't have to learn this on lesson 43 in your spiritual walk. This can be learned on day one. Just pray for open doors and there'll be natural times for you to share your faith. So number one, pray until they come to them. Number two, Pray for open doors. Pray for open doors. Um, and then it goes like this. Colossians chapter 4, verse 4. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. You think, oh, Paul, you know what the message is. How many times have you been saying this? Right? Come on. How, why do we even need to pray that you can do this clearly? Certainly you know the message clearly. Can I tell you something? Oh, my goodness. Like, there, there might be a pastor in this room. I won't name names. That when it's time to share his faith, he gets nervous. How do I know that? Because I'm the guy. And you know how easy it is. How easy it is. Some, some people, you know, so, so what do you do? You know, some of you know I have a little hobby being a seminary professor, right? So I want to tell people I'm a professor. Because why? That sounds good, doesn't it? That sounds cool. Oh, you're so intellectual, Dave. <laughs> I don't want to say pastor. Because that's just hard. Wow. And if I have problems with that, right? No, no, no. Pray that we can all speak clearly. We don't stumble. We don't catch our words. We don't, here I am. This is actually what I'm about. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I do or what I love. What you do this weekend? Oh, we went out to the park, played some. It was awesome. Had a great time. And you know what thing comes up in your mind? You know what thing comes up in your mind? Went to church, had a great time. And you know it's in there. And you know why it popped up in your mind, didn't you? Because you're supposed to say it. You know how hard it is to say that? <sighs> yeah. You just pray that the conversation goes quicker. Pray, pray that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should, as I should. So, 
That's a challenge for all of us, including me. Here's the challenge. Let them know you know God. Let them know you know God. Here's the challenge. God's heart is the lost. And so how is he deciding to reach them? He is deciding not to do it through skywriting. He's deciding not to do it through angels. He doesn't even use preachers all that often. He uses us. And guess how he uses us? He gets you to go, I'm going to pray. Pray for this to happen. Just devote yourself to prayer. And not only that, pray that God, that I'll open up opportunities for you. And then when an opportunity is open, don't go, nah, nah, say the j -j -j Jesus word, right? Or the ch -ch -ch church word or whatever you got to say, right? <sighs> I told you this is adventurous. I told you it was dangerous. I told you it was heart pounding, right? <laughs> the amount of people that go, yeah. You know what? I used to go to church. <laughs> I won't tell you the whole story, but I remember in a play and I was just talking to some people. Finally, the person asked me, where are you going? I'm going up to Gander to talk to some Salvation Army kids. What's your message in one sentence? Ah, I didn't know my message in one sentence, so I made it up that this generation needs hope, and hope is found in Jesus. I just got that much out. I got that J -J -J Jesus word out. The guy turned around at the front and looked at me and said, I used to go to church. It was the best time in my life. He just opened up and poured out his life. He said, my wife has cancer. We don't think he, she's going to live. We had a little prayer meeting in the plane. But that wouldn't have happened unless I let them know that I know God. You don't have to knock people over the head. You don't have to be pushy. You don't have to, like, put people down. You just let them know who you are and that I know God. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I'm in change. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Here's the next section and the last section, Colossians 4, 5 to 6. And be wise. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders, those who are on the way to God. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. In other words, if you have an open door, go through that door. And if there's another door, go through that door. You keep on going through the door until there's a closed door and the opportunity stops. But you don't kick down doors. You just keep on going through the doors that are open. We don't, we're, we're always full of grace. In fact, that's what he says. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations always be full of grace. Always be gracious. Sometimes I, I see these YouTube preachers are out there and just ripping into people, and, and everybody goes, oh, I wish I was gutsy like that. And I'm going, no. No, the Bible actually says be full of grace to everyone. Be gracious when you talk to people on the way to God. Let your conversation always be full of grace. And then it says this, seasoned with salt, so you may know how to answer everyone. Well, that's not always helpful. What does it mean to be salty, right? Season things with salt. It could mean a lot of things. But he says exactly what it is. So that you may know how to answer someone. So basically when you're, you go out and just give, give little bits out there to go see if anybody jumps at it, right? God bless you. Wow. I pray and I'll be praying for you. All those things that just letting people know, and then you know what? Half the time, even three quarters of the time, nobody bites at that. That's fine. But every so often, somebody does. And you go, <laughs> adventure time. Adventure time. This is the time now I get to say something. This is the time I get to say something. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I remember doing this. Uh, going through a, a line up, uh, going into the United States uh, in an airport. And you know how you, you go over immigration and there's a line up of about 200 people and two guards? They're <laughs> checking everybody and you inch your head, inch, you know, shove your bag, inch your head. And finally got to the thing. And this, this woman I was, I was talking to, she was not happy. She was not happy to have somebody coming into the great United States of America that was an American. She said, why are you here? What are you doing? She just like, really grilled me. And in not a happy voice, she's probably having a bad day. So <clears throat> I was very respectful. I answered all her questions. And then she said, you can go. 
So I turned and said, thank you. God bless you. Stop. Oh. <laughs> oh. They don't let Christians in, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and she said this. My best, best friend keeps on saying, God bless you. She's one of those born-again Christians. Are you a born-again Christian? Yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> she says, I should go to church. And she just starts to spill out her life. And I'm going, okay, she's going to let me through. <laughs> this is actually an opportunity. This is not an opportunity for me to be arrested. It's good. So I said, yeah, you should go to church. You should go to ch her church. Not that church is the thing. The church isn't the thing. But Jesus is. And you might be able to find him there. Because his people are there. I had a great little conversation. I still looked around 200 people waiting for the conversation to be done. Felt a little bit bad, but not too bad. As you go, sprinkle some salt as you go. As you go. <laughs> oh, man. Still remember uh, my daughter? When she was very small, went to the bank. This is back in the time where they had things called bank tellers. And uh, <laughs> went up there. I sat her on a little counter. And uh, talking to the bank teller, I, I sort of knew them, sort of, and said, hey, you know, how's it going? Here's, you know, these are the things I need. And Cara's this little girl, looks over and says, do you love Jesus? Wow, thanks, thanks, honey. You just dove us right in the deep end there, didn't you? <laughs> and the bank teller looked at me, did she just say, do I like cheesies? I have to explain this. No, no, she, she asked if you love Jesus. We love Jesus in our family, and she really does. And so she asked you. <laughs> yeah, you can tell this, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Everywhere you go, I'll pray for that. I'll pray for that. God bless you. Is it that hard? That's easy. Can I tell you the easy and hard parts of these things? First of all, pray until they come. Pray until they come. That's easy. You just do that, right? You put notes up. You just, you just keep on doing it. You just keep on praying until they come to him. Pray for open doors. That's a little scary. Isn't it a little scary? A little scary? Okay, God, whoo, I'm ready. I'm ready. Just open up those doors. Open up those doors. And then when the door opens, here's the adventures part. Here's the heart pounding part. Here's the part that a lot of us like, like hack at. Okay, let, let them know you know God. Let them know you know God. There's some of you who are gifted evangelists and you say, come on, Dave, you need to. Well, you have a spiritual gift of it. Good for you. For the rest of us, we just need to let people know that you know God. And then, just salt conversations everywhere you go. Isn't that an awesome passage? Isn't that just great, super practical? And can I say, it's the heart of God. It's the heart of God. I know he loves you and me the same. But I know, I'm back in the prayer corner. Somebody asked for prayer, and I get the tap, and I go, do you know God, or are you on the way? And you go, I, I think I'm on the way to know God. I, I don't know if I really know him. What's holding you back? <laughs> Guess really nothing. Would you like to step into his family now? Sure. <laughs> it's like... The heart of God beats in my heart as all heaven leans over and waits for the moment. As somebody by faith says, forgive me of my sin. I believe you died and rose again. You have my life. It's all yours. Heaven explodes in hallelujah. Heaven just goes, yes! Somebody has passed from death to life. Somebody now has the spirit of God in them. Their names are written in the land's book of life. Everything has changed from that person by a moment of faith. Woo! Yeah. 
And then I remember back, and I remember as a six-year-old, me doing that too. And guess what? Heaven had a party for me too. <laughs> Let's our, ask our worship team to come on up. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to listen to our points again. Pray until they come. Ask God, what, what do you want me to do with each one of these? Do you want me to be more serious about that? Do you want me to pray for open doors? Or God, can you give me the strength to let them know that you, are, that you know God? God, I just need to salt my conversations with you. I'm going to give us a, a little bit of silence before the, the uh, band play, plays. Maybe you could pray about one of those, okay? Maybe you could pray about one. Let me give you a prayer. Like this, God, could you open a door for me to share my faith? If you don't know which one to pray, pray that. God, could you open a door for me to share my faith? If you're on the way to God, if you're not even sure there is a God, here's a prayer for you. God, I want to know if you're real. Show me. <laughs> Talking about adventure. Let's spend some time praying. God, open up a door for me. God, if you're real. Show me. Let's just pray. My Heavenly Father, I want the people of this church to experience the heart-pounding adventure of being used by you to win the lost. God, use us this week. Use us next week as Camp Sunday comes and this place is filled with people just curious about you. Use us at work, at home, in the grocery store, the lineups at banks and coffee shops. God, open up doors for us. We want to be participating with your heart of focus for this world. I ask this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
with my agenda I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough take, take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy Jesus, have my heart, my will, my soul. Jesus, have my hopes, my dreams, my world. With joy I lay it down. With joy I cast my crown. Jesus, have it all. To you I bring my praise, my lips, 
my song, living sacrifice as one reborn. Your life is now my own. Your will is what I want. But Jesus, have it all. Jesus, have it all. Jesus, have it all. To you belong the glory, praise of all the world. Jesus, have it all. Jesus, have it all. All blessing and all honor, majesty and all. Jesus, have it all. Jesus, have your church, your love, your bride, the joy of you be freely gave, your life, a radiant and white, washed and purified. Jesus, have it all. Jesus, have your word, your due, your song. The praise of every nation, and tribe, and song, let all the things be made, we glorify your name. Jesus, have it all. Jesus, have it all. Jesus, have it all. You belong to glory, the praises of the world. Jesus, have it all, Jesus, have it all, all blessing and all honor. Let's sing that chorus again. Jesus, have, Jesus, have it all, Jesus, have it all, to you belong the glory and praises of the world. Jesus, have it all, Jesus, have Jesus, have it all. 
Jesus have it all. To you belong the glory, the praises of the world. Jesus have it all. Jesus have it all. Oh, blessing and all honor, majesty and all. Jesus have it all. Oh, Jesus have it all. Jesus have it all. In this moment, and I think this is the moment. Um, I uh, have uh, Braden here. I'd like you to introduce you to him. You can remain standing. He's uh, got a God story I uh, think you should hear. Uh, yeah, I just felt like I had to share this this morning um, just with what Dave is uh, speaking on and um, just the message, this passage. Um, so uh, my wife and I, we've lived in this four-unit house um, for five years now, pretty much since we've been married. And um, she kind of got us started praying for this house um, every single night before we go to bed. Um, and we've been praying for the, the people in our house. They'd come to know the Lord. And um, there's, there's one, um, one person in our home who um, we've particularly been praying for. Um, and I just, Shane has been gone in Manitoba this week um, at a conference. And so last night I was, I mean, we have literally been praying for this person for five years every single night. Um, and last night I was just like about to pray again, and I just thought, uh, yeah, God, do you even want me to pray anymore? Like, I just, I just don't know. Am I wasting my time praying for this person, for this family? Should I be praying for somebody else? And um, I prayed anyway, just because, like, I probably should. Um, and I didn't even ask God, you know, should I pray this? I just kind of thought it in my head. I was like, I, I don't know if this is going to be worth it. This morning, I just kind of forgot about it, and I uh, had to do some chores, go into the basement. The setup of our house is kind of weird, but there's one spot where I can hear everything that comes from that person's house. I hear a lot of conversations over the past five years, and like I'm sure she's heard a lot of Shana's in mine. But uh, this morning, I stepped in this one door to go bring some junk down into the basement, and I, I, I heard this voice. <clears throat> Um, it was this person's, and they were, like, on the phone with somebody and said, I, uh, did I tell you about this vision that I had? Um, and they went into talk about this vision, this dream that they had woke up from saying that there was um, never experienced something like it before. And, I mean, I... For the privacy of this person, I'm going to not share the details of it, but I can just say, like, Jesus, that was you. This is you and them saying, like, I felt so good after that, after that dream. I'll never forget it. And that was it. And I'm, like, I'm kind of here uh, eavesdropping on this, right? And I'm, like, trying to be quiet so they don't hear me. And uh, I continue with my thing. But it impacted me so much this morning because I remember last night I thought that um, and on the drive up here I'm just had a new just vigor to pray for this person and the family um, and I just know that the Lord is at work and he's going to bring this person and just the one thing that Dave said pray until they come like pray until they come if it's five years if it's whatever um, He's, he is, has his heart and his mind set on that one sheep that's gone out. Um, and uh, it might be a long time to go find them, but uh, that's where his heart is set. So I just want to encourage you this morning. I'm encouraged. And um, yeah, and uh, I, I ask that you pray for me, pray for open doors for us. Um, and uh, I pray the same for, for this body. Um, but I'll, maybe I'll just say a prayer real quick as we go keep continuing worship. But God, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for um, your amazing faithfulness. 
I thank you that you are real and you are revealing yourself to people in this world, God. You are going out to the lost sheep. Um, so we just ask that you would continue to do that, God. Give us a heart and hunger to pray. Um, yeah, and we just uh, ask that you would, you would open their eyes, give us boldness when we need it, Lord. Um, pray this in Jesus' name. Thanks for sharing that story, Braden. I know God's at work, and I, I've heard some stories from other people like Joel um, this week and how God is, is working. Joel, if you're out there, I don't know. Maybe, I don't, but maybe you're skipping church this morning, but <laughs> God is working.
in the blood of Jesus the wash is white as snow I believe in the power of the gospel still makes the broken oh I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone I believe I believe I believe as I bow before you Lord sing out church I will Church begins to sing. I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow for you, Lord, I will rise in confidence. I will see your oh goodness, Lord, the land that I'm living in. No matter where I go, and no matter. daughters sing it to the sons every generation look at what the Lord has done sing it to the darkness that the light has come sing it to the nations look at what the Lord has done sing it to the daughters sing it to the sons to every generation, look at what the Lord has done. The sin to the darkness, that the light is dumb. The sin to the nations, look at what the Lord has done. Look at what the Lord has done. As I bow before you. Lord, I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land that I'm living in. And no matter where I go, and no matter where I've been, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land that I'm living in. As I bow before you, Lord, I will rise. No matter where I go, no matter where I've been. 
Heavenly Father, every time we bow before you, our confidence comes in you, in you alone. And so, Father, I pray you'll stir up our memory, remind us from this morning's gathering to go and devote ourselves to prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you all have a seat? Thank you again for coming to worship with us. What a privilege it is. Uh, I love it. If you have not filled out a connection card and you are a guest with us, please do that. Remember, there's prayer requests for those of us who are regulars. You can turn that in at, the, at the, uh, uh, both uh, where the offering is, but also if you have one and you're new, you'll get a gift if you turn it out at the front with a green shirt, so make sure you do that. There's really only one announcement that we're going to focus on today, one focus, and that's Camp Sunday next week. We've run this time four weeks of camps and there are going to be kids up on the stage singing there's going to be camp t-shirts there's going to be families here on the way to God so church on the rock come on church on the rock if you got to turn up the friendliness yeah I turn it up to 11 all right so we want to go and meet people be kind and friendly those who are hyper introverts and might die if you talk to somebody smile come on come on you can smile and nod all right so we are going to go and reach out for next Sunday. There'll be freezies. There'll be a lot of fun. So, uh, and a, uh, and a family friendly message that I think everyone will enjoy. And, uh, for those of you who give, those of you who give, thank you. We're able to do this because of your gifts. God uses your faithfulness in giving so that we can rent the building. We can, we can uh, get some of the, the equipment up here. Thank you so much for doing that. And I know that there's some people who are just new at giving. Thank you again for us to move forward. Uh, we depend on God uh, through you, moving through you to give those gifts. If this is new for you or, or if you're not used to we have two giving stations. You can give online and uh, with, uh, with our e-transfer at gifts at churchontherock.ca. Uh, I'm going to dismiss you in a moment and uh, send up a prayer. But I just want to say now, thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a great week. We're going to close off our service at that moment. I have uh, just.